Well, English is not my native language. I speak a dialect which they only understand on the other side of the North Sea, Dutch. Uh, but I'll do my best. Sometimes I'll stumble on my words. I have too many slides, so I will have to rush through them, uh, pick out what, what, what you like, and forget what, what's going too fast or what it doesn't like. No, why is this one? Jules Verne. He came up with an idea of a space rocket. It was just like a big uh, bullet. You can see it on the picture. The question is a little bit, what will connectivity look like uh, 100 years from now? Can we predict it? Well, I'll dare to make a small prediction. The Stone Age was not ended because the lack of stone. And our silicon ship age will not end because of lack of sand. And I'll illustrate that by a few slides. <laughs> There's a point on this one, so I can. This one number is important. Uh, a cubic meter. This was a thousand times larger. This is a thousand times smaller. It is a liter, and it started with a big computer, and then we had the mini computers, and then we had the notebooks of about a liter. And if you then go another factor of thousand, you end up with what you could call a, a pushpin, a smart pushpin. Si uh, the intelligence of a PC, the size of just one cubic centimeter. My talk will be about these kinds of products. What will happen if you have these kinds of products? There's a little bit mathematics on it as well. That is, if you have a cubic inch, let's say the cubic inch is quite easy. If you divide the 25 uh, millimeters into one, you'll have a, a piece which is one millimeter thick and 12 centimeters large. So if I talk about a cubic uh, inch, it's, it could be just a, a system in a foil. And I'll give examples of that one. But that's my opening slide, really. Just do the calculation a little bit further on. We now are visiting, we, we are working on these kinds of devices already. It, it's not major stuff, but just, just compare an, an hi fi set with an iPod, and in 10 years' time, that iPod will be just a, a plaster or, or just a little thing in a foil. But if you then continue a little bit, you go to one millimeter in the year 2040. And if you just apply the mathematics in a, in a linear way, you'll end up here. The fundamental thing about it is that what we are doing is that one millimeter thick devices in foil, that's not silicon anymore based. It's based on organic electronics, polymers. Now you can pollute a silicon crystal a little bit and make from a conductor, you can make a semiconductor, which is the semiconductor world. But you can also pollute a polymer a little bit. You manipulate it a little bit and it becomes conductive, semiconductive. That's the kind of devices we are using for this kind of stuff. The thing, however, is if you would calculate it till the end of the year, till this side, this is, this is life. And what is nature doing? Nature is not manipulating polymers. Nature is programming polymers with DNA. Think about it. It's not my story, I, uh, but this is the reason why I say that the silicon age will not end because of lack of sand, because we will be in the polymer age anyway. I'm not a professor, so I'm not publishing that much. If I give this presentation, it's probably always in Dutch. I don't do it that often in English, although the slides are in English. I'm not a consul consultant. I'm in a lucky position that there is an organization of about a thousand uh, PhD and, and, and master science people uh, behind me. If I have a crazy idea and I'm able to convince others out of the thousand, at least a few will say, well, he's not that crazy, let's try to do it. So I'm in an organization where they really try to make things happening. And one of the, the things I'll explain this evening is, is three learning curves which are important. Moore's law is known by everybody, but there are more learning curves which people don't realize and will have an impact on what is going to happen. And one of the things, one of the crazy ideas is a uh, is an cooperative driving challenge where cars will not drive auton autonomously, but cooperatively, especially during traffic jams initially, but later on more and more. And we are making that kind of uh, challenge in, uh, in uh, two years' time from now as an application of what would happen if every de little device becomes smart. Moore's law. It's really about shrinking the, the size of silicon or the, the line width. Now, most of the people think it's determined in the Bay Area. It isn't anymore. The, the company who is now delivering the equipment of making these kinds, these things then, is ASML, and that's in the south of the Netherlands, uh, 
at Eindhoven or Veldhoven, I really have to say. What are they doing? Well, you make those ships with uh, lenses and you project on a very small thing, you, you project uh, the reticle, as they call it, uh, the, the, the example. To continue further on in Moore's law, at this very moment, we got stuck. You can't do it with light anymore. So we're doing it now with electro, uh, extra uh, uh, UV, EUV, you call it. But that pass, it can't pass through air anymore. So it has to be a vacuum environment. It has to be a complete different machine. It has to be a mirror, it's ultra vacuum, and we are building these kinds of machines now. And in a couple of years, we'll have this uh, figure. Why is that important? Well, most of you are using PCs with uh, silicon on this size, submicron, they call it. What we are now doing, we are racing to what you could call uh, nanoelectronics, which means that the line sizes at this very moment already are going down. And a very fast PC will have a processor like this, and at this moment, with this new technology, we are going to hit the, the 10 nanomicros. This is incredible if you, if you realize what, what you could do with a ship with, with that line sizes on it. I mean, for example, all your hard disk out your PCs will be just removed and, and replaced by, a P, by, by just one ship with the memory on it. This, this whole technological trend was already, or had this effect already on the business years ago, 10 years or 20 years ago, actually, a Harvard Business Review, called it the computerless computer company. It was not anymore on the hardware because the hardware was shrinking so rapidly that it became real cheap and he really earned money with software. So this is the IBM age and this is the Bill Gates age. This same Moore's law and changing businesses because this Moore's law was doubling the performance in 18 months. If you do the calculation, it is affects a thousand in 15 years time. And in 15 years time, the rules of the games from IBM to Microsoft shifted. This same learning curve of effect a thousand is happening in bandwidth. I have to admit, it took me about 10 years to figure out what was really the, the, the figure to, to look upon. It was not band speed, the, the speed of the bandwidth. It was really the number of megabytes an individual is consuming, is downloading. And if you then put it in a, in a straight line, this is for the fixed line, this is for the mobile, and they'll merge at a certain moment. The thing is that people are paying a dollar a day for bandwidth. If technology provides more bandwidth, you start using it if it is offered for a dollar a day. So bandwidth, if you just continue this line, in 10 years' time, bandwidth will be practically for free. It will be just like Moore's Law, change a lot of things in a time period of, let's say, 10, 15 years. Your mindset will change, the rule of the game changes, all these kinds of things. And in 10 years, a lot can happen. I won't demonstrate it by something that's happened now, but Graham Bill invented uh, telephony. That was this year. It took five years to figure out that if you would take an electric wire uh, more than 10 meters, that it was not working. They had to make a twisted pair. And once they had twisted pair, at that time, it took 10 years time, and then you had these pictures on it. So even 100 years ago, on connectivity, if you have a breakthrough, the rules of the games in 10 years time can change tremendously. So what is happening now? This picture of being Bill Gates, uh, pretty rich. It, it, it used to be in the 90s, 10 years ago, that, that operators, telecom operators, were paying a fortune for hot air. Yeah, they called it UMTS. They, they paid billions for it. But if Benfis is going down with this rate, what is going to happen next? And things can happen in 10 years' time. Well, one of the things, of course, is the internet, the academic internet, 70, 85, I was playing with it. Then we had this dial-in in 1995. In, in now we have, in 2005, we have broadband. Fiber to the home. I, I do have fiber to the home at home. It, it, it's just great. But what will happen next? The thing is that if you have been connecting everybody on this planet, the next step is let's connect every device on the planet. So you have something what is called the Internet of Things. And if you just do the simple calculation, hundreds of people working on the mainframe